So I just picked up this late 2014 27-inch 5K resolution iMac. Let's see if we can convert it into an Apple Studio display. So we're gonna start by removing the screen and we're gonna use this little roller tool I got with my adhesive pack uh, from AliExpress. You just stick it into the edge of the screen, roll it around until you feel little resistance and then you should be able to pull the screen right off. So there will be two cables still attached to the screen. Make sure you carefully remove those before you pull the entire screen off. And there still will be adhesive at the bottom of the screen that the tool didn't remove. So for this, I just cut it off with a knife and then I remove the screen. At the bottom of the display, there's going to be a part number that you see on this sticker. Make sure you take note of that, and this is a number you're going to use to order the correct uh, controller board off of eBay or wherever you want to buy it from. But along with the controller board, you do need to order a power supply. In my case, it was a 12 volt 6 amp power supply. I also ordered a speaker kit, so this is supposed to allow you to use your OEM MacBook speakers with this controller board. So the next step is just removing all the internals from your MacBook. Uh, take your time doing this. There is a lot of parts. Be careful. Don't lose anything. Uh, these parts can be worth some money, so just try to be careful not to damage anything. Also, be careful when handling the power supply, which is this big rectangular piece I'm taking out right now. Uh, you can shock yourself. There are capacitors in there, so be careful with that. Okay, I finally got my eBay order in. As you can see, I got a power adapter. I got a controller for the logic board. I have my logic board here. And I also have a speaker crossover kit. So this will allow me to use the speakers in my stock 27 inch iMac. Let's see if we can get it hooked up and working. Okay, I have everything hooked up now. Two DisplayPort cables for the full 5K resolution on my older model iMac. I have my power adapter hooked up. I have the ribbon cable hooked up to the screen and I have the power cable for the screen hooked up as well. Let's see if it works. Oh, nice. Uh, that is 5K. Take a look at the two screens here. Uh, color profiles are kind of different, but uh, the resolution is the same. That's really nice. And there is a menu that comes on this control board, allowing you to control many different options, actually. So you can definitely adjust the color to match better with your original display here. I did hook up the speakers, but they never ended up working properly. They were squeaking, so I didn't use them. Let's see if it works. I hooked everything up for the speakers. Select it as our output here. Let's play a video. So oh, it is working well. Awesome. And I used the uh, straight edge to see if the screen would clear with that power adapter. These are the three wires I'm gonna have to solder into to use the stock Mac power supply wire. Uh, I wanted to use it because it's gonna look way nicer. And right here, I'm just cutting the cable, stripping it. I'm gonna be soldering it shortly. So right here, I'm just testing continuity, making sure each wire is what I think it is. After I verify with my multimeter, the continuity of all the wires, I can start soldering them together. And uh, right here, I'm just soldering and then I'm heat shrinking around the wires. If you don't want to do this, you can also use vampire clips or you can use those solder tubes where you don't have to manually solder anything. Just take your time and be careful while doing this. And for the ground wire, I didn't actually solder it. I just wrapped it around the MacBook one and screwed it into the chassis. I also did the same thing for the power button wire in the chassis, so I would be able to use the stock Mac power button. And right here, I'm just heat shrinking them. All right, I just finished all the soldering on this, so I started up this plug to the original Mac plug so I can use this one from the back. It'll look nice and OEM. 
I soldered the power button up to the logic board right here. So I'll be able to turn it on and off the original map power button. Also very OEM looking. And uh, now it's time to plug this power brick in and see if it all works together. The light on here should light up. So I plugged in the Mac power supply with this white original cable here into the back. Now we're just going to plug this power brick in to see if it lights up or not. And if it does, then that means we successfully soldered all the cables. Nice. Successful. All right. I'm just going to plug this um, 12 volt power into the logic board. And then we should be able to see from this little controller switchboard here. If I press the power button, it should turn on. Oh wait, gotta use the original map power button. Remember that wired that up. There we go, it worked. The LED came on when I press the power on the map button. P press it again and turned off. Since we got everything um, working, it's all soldered up, it's all wired up. Um, we know everything works now. We just gotta make it fit inside the iMac case. So as you can see right here, I already tested that the power brick would clear with the screen. So I'm gonna hot glue that there. And then I'm probably gonna use the Velcro and secure the logic board on the right side right here. And then drill a hole through the RAM, the RAM door and seal it back up. Now, before I'm going to hot glue the power supply to the chassis, I'm going to wipe it down with some alcohol to make sure I have a nice clean surface to adhere to. And you want to use lots of hot glue to put this power adapter on there. You don't want it coming out and it is a big, heavy object. So use lots of glue. For the logic board, I didn't want to hot glue it obviously, so I laid down some Velcro onto the chassis and some Velcro onto the back of that logic board so I can just stick it on there. And if I need to remove it, it'll be easy to remove without damaging the logic board. I'm also going to hot glue down all the wires and all the cables in the chassis so they don't move around and they can stay in place. So I hot glued everything on, velcroed the logic board on, everything is nice and secure in there now, and I'm ready to test the display. So for testing, I'm just going to tape the display back onto the screen and test it that way. I tested it for a couple of days to make sure there was nothing wrong before I finally put the adhesive two-sided tape on there, which I ordered off AliExpress. So I got it all taped up and I'm trying it out right now. One thing I did notice is that there's not enough weight in the chassis anymore. So it doesn't really like to stay at the angle you set it at. Um, I'm probably gonna have to add some lead at the bottom here to make up for the loss in weight since I removed all the internals. Uh, but besides that, it looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna have to tune the display a little bit to match better, but it is 5K. It is a Rena display, so it looks really nice. As you can see, the display really didn't want to stay in place. It would come up real fast after you set the angle. So I'm just going to add some lead into the bottom there. Each block is one pound, so there is three pounds of lead in there. Okay, so I put the adhesive on the screen or on the case and it's ready to seal up. Everything's in there. Everything's glued down, but the weights at the bottom there. So it should be good to go. When you're putting your display back on, it's really important to make sure that you line up the bottom edge before you stick the rest of it on, because once you put that bottom edge on, you're not gonna be able to move it. So if it's off centered, it's gonna stay that way. Lastly, just press firmly around the edges of the display to make sure it seals nicely with the chassis. And for the connector holes at the back of the display, I just covered those up with the MacBook trackpad cover. And here's the final product.
Alright guys, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you found the video informative or entertaining. Thanks guys, bye.